All right, all right. It's Deadman's Tone Podcast with your host, Mr. Deadman, Becky and SK. And we're broadcasting live from a small, humble bar deep down in a bayou out so deep. Uh, this bar is so far gone, like, no one, I don't think it even has a name. There's no, there's no name at this bar. You can't even find it. I'm scared. <sighs> but is it, uh, you know, is it even like within the uh, uh, continental U.S. anymore? I don't even know. But a, a bottle of, uh, of absinthe floated its way down here, and I'll be tapping into that real fast. <laughs> so I'm all good. Oh, oh, with this here hopefully tonight. no swamp water got in into the bottle. Hey, that makes it more or, interesting. Or maybe that would make it better. I don't know. Hey, yeah. Oh, with absinthe, should be fine. Uh, our guest tonight, John McNee. How's it going? And a very good evening to you. Good evening to you, sir. <laughs> wow. I love his accent. Can I'll, you just speak the whole time? I think he's be. on the wrong show. He sounds really nice. And probably, uh, yeah, I was thinking that. I was thinking, you know what? Maybe you should call him Sir McNee. Is, is that proper? Oh. Well, no, because I, I'm a, a staunch um, Republican, so I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't accept okay. any knighthood from the royal family. I don't believe in them. Okay, so... Yeah. Uh, they really exist? I'm pretty sure they exist. Middle finger to the, the royal yeah. family. Middle but, finger... Uh, you okay. know, I, don't, I don't support them. Oh, that kind of believe in. Yeah. Okay, okay. Gotcha. I got you. I don't support them either. If my guest is going to come on and tell me that, you know what? I don't know. You know what? Fuck the royal family. Oh, exactly. Oh, shit. Uh, oh I, got a, I got a memo from our producer. Um, tell me that I need to clean up my mouth. So I can't say fucks anymore. Oh I, I got I to gotta be more uh, creative about it. I got to say, like, Mars girl. Every time instead of saying bitch, I'll say Mars girl. Um, I, I just have to be more creative about it. I'm, I'm sorry. It's just... I got this note from my producer. If you don't like it, just talk to uh, Joe Rogan. <laughs> I mean, sorry. Now my lawyer is telling me uh, it's not Joe Rogan. So, yeah, be careful about that. And we're canceled. <laughs> uh, just a few announcements, guys. Okay, if you are a fan of independent work, if you're a fan of the show, please check out the Patreon page, patreon.com slash Tome, Supporting us. I mean, what you can do, what you can give, it goes a long way. It goes a long way. Also, have a podcast um, a promotion special going on where if you if you subscribe to the podcast, this show you're listening to is also, well, it is a, a podcast. You can listen to it on iTunes or any sort of podcast app that's there. If you subscribe to it, take a screenshot on your cell phone and send it. Um, you send it to the all the information on the show notes below. You send it to the email address, deadmanstome at gmail.com. You have a chance to win a free shirt. I'm giving out like hundreds of them, so it's quite a bit of money I'm putting into this thing. So, Hun- yeah. literally hundreds. Yeah, I'm gonna go crazy. I'm going balls to the wall with this thing because I'm like, you know Whoa. what? I want to show people that I mean I'm serious about this, and uh, I do appreciate their support. And I'm going crazy. Speaking of going crazy, um, my wife going? had. A sh- <laughs> yeah, right. I'm going. My wife had a show idea. Just saying. Uh-oh. My wife. Uh oh. She proposed. You're, you're, Jesus, I don't even have to hear it. I know you're in so much fucking trouble. Yeah. <laughs> she listened to the other episode where uh, I, I might have said a few things, you know? So Yeah, I kept telling you you were going to get in trouble. She, uh, Did she you noticed. Did you listen to me? Well, no. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. I don't. I don't, sorry. I don't that, might be, that might be why she had a story idea. Because. <laughs> Yeah. He wasn't listening. <laughs> That's exactly Just a, it. I don't know. That's exactly it, man. It's, uh, you know how Just we saying. ask, you know, what is Mr. Demon going to drink tonight? You know, whether it be whiskey, beer, and absinthe, or whatever. She was like, oh, I have an idea. How about I give you shots? I'm like, what? She was like, yeah, how about for one show, I give you shots of whatever. What do you mean, whatever? Of whatever. It could be alcohol. It could be, uh, vegetable oil. It could be, I'm like, what, bleach? <laughs> She's like, no, 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 no bleach. No, no fabuloso. Nothing, nothing that would leave forensic traces. Yeah. So. So she can give you, like, tuna juice and cinnamon. cat food. And- yeah. She could. Yeah. She could absolutely do that. Uh-huh. Here, here's an idea. 
cinnamon powder mixed with vegetable oil. Um, don't give her any ideas. In fact, uh, don't don't <laughs> don't don't talk to my wife, please. <laughs> I don't I don't need. Uh, I don't I don't want to die. I don't want to die. But think of the ratings if you did. Ah, uh, you know me too well. Um, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But anyway, anyway. Um, all that's right. That's a well, great idea, by the way. I think that's a great show idea. Ah, uh, it's interesting. If people want it, we could do it. So let, you just let me know in the comment section that you, you think it's a good idea, and I'll probably do it. But you, you just have to let me know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What kind of uh, numbers are we talking about? Like one shot per minute? Or uh, five minutes? Uh, you know what? We didn't work that out. You know what? I'll okay. leave that. I'll leave all that planning in the hands of Becky, the chat, and the Facebook group. So if you want to have any way this <laughs> okay. thing. And disclaimer. Oh, wait yeah. a minute. And disclaimer. No matter what Jesse drinks and no matter how many 24-hour podcasts he promises you, no. <laughs> no, no, no what? No 24-hour podcast for a year. <laughs> oh, okay. So, like... He's cut off. <laughs> oh. No, not 48 oh. hours either. <laughs> oh, come on. It wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. I'm, I'm doing. No, I can do it again. It I can do it again next week. I can do it today. I can save 24 Excuse hours. Excuse me. <laughs> no, I'm just. Nah, I don't think again. That was too grilling. Too grilling. Okay. With all that said, it was said, fun though. It was. It was. All right, John McNee. For those who don't know who you are, who are you, and what do you do? I uh, am. Uh, I'm a Scottish horror author. The author of. Uh, Prince of Nightmares, Drudge Punk, Petroleum Precinct, various uh, horror stories published in a variety of anthologies. I'm also uh, the host of a little YouTube show called A Recipe for Nightmares, where I cook the recipes from the Vincent Price cookbook. Um, and aside from that, I'm other things as well, but those are the main ones that you'd want, you'd want to talk about. All these things we could talk about. Because they yeah. all interest me, especially, I mean, the yeah. YouTube channel as well, um, um, on your, your writing, the, the cooking, the, that's okay. But first, I guess let's yeah. start with the writing. Uh, so how long, how long have you been writing? Uh, well, pretty much all my life, uh, I think I was drawing stories before I could actually, before I was actually taught how to write. Um, I've been writing horror primarily for about 15 years and been published for about 10, I don't know, something like that. I was definitely uh, late in university when I decided to, that I was going to finally write a short story with a swear word in it. You know, this is how long it took me <laughs> to, to drum up the courage. Let's see. Uh, and see. Mm -hmm. I, 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 let's see how far I can take I, this. I relate to that, dude. Yeah, I really do. <laughs> I, I'm, a, I'm an adult now. I can, I can do this, and that's when I started uh, <laughs> writing uh, horror. And I've been getting. I've been. I think I was first published in 2010. Uh, the short stories I've been uh, doing it for a little, uh, a little while now. Okay, that's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Hmm. Now, I'm sure you took it that long to to cuss, though. I mean, I, I guess is that like a like a proper thing? That must be a. I mean, the the, the first the first opportunity I could I cussed, and my my mom washed my mouth out with a Irish Spring soap. I was like, ah man. I'm sure. Yeah. No, I've always been very <laughs> always very properly spoken in my house, and you know, although there has been uh, cussing, I never dared to put it on the page. Uh, okay. um, in case, in case you know, my parents read it or something, and uh, uh, likewise, I never. And you'd have to hear about it at family dinner, right? Yeah, yeah, and same. I didn't want to write about sex. I didn't want to write about anything too violent. Um, for most of my teenage years, I wrote sort of old-fashioned 1940s pulp detective stories. That was the kind of stuff I wrote. 
And surprisingly, there was no market for that. Um, but my other big love was horror. Um, and finally, I, I got up the courage to, to think, well, well maybe I can, I can write one of these things. And, you know, maybe no one in my family ever has to read it. Because, you, know, you know, I didn't think... Maybe that maybe it won't sell anyone any either, and maybe that'll never get seen by anybody. Um, it has sold a bit better, and they have read it, um, but they haven't said anything too specific about um, or, or or saying anything about being you know displeased uh, about uh, how uh, gory and and uh, and filled with sex and swear words it all is. Um, so that's all right. I'm just going to continue doing that. I, I came to the conclusion that if you write something that offends the family enough, it shuts them up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think that's right. If you just if you just nibble around the edges, then they can get all huffy about it. But if you really just shut them down, <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> then you're okay. Uh -huh. Yep. I mean, uh -huh. what, what are they going to do? Argue with you? I mean, I think you made hmm. your point, right? Right. right. Yeah. All right. So, um, if someone's new to your work, where should they start? Where should where they should where should they begin? Uh, I would suggest starting with Prince of Nightmares, which is my only full blown horror novel. It's uh, uh, it's my first so it's my first um, horror novel. It's about a hotel in the Highlands of Scotland, and it's very special because anyone who spends a night there uh, is guaranteed to experience horrifying nightmares. Um, so it's become quite popular with people who like nightmares. Um, now, is that is that a real location and is that really true? I've or never heard. Okay. I've never, yeah, I've never heard of anywhere that does it. I hope that it's real. If it was, I would go, for sure. I would be like one of those people um, in the book who travel to it. Um, and the protagonist of my story is an Australian businessman whose wife commits suicide and he finds out the very last thing she did before she killed herself was book a room for him at this hotel. So he travels there to find out Ooh. why and unravels a mystery. So it's a, uh, yeah. That's a, that's a cool story. I think so. And yet it has not been optioned for Hollywood movie rights yet. Uh, I don't really what? understand what the hold-up is. Cause well, because yeah. they're, they're idiots. We've been over this in the show many times. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I All mean, you could take that premise and do whatever you wanted to. You don't have to use my story at all, you, you know, or any of the characters. You could just take the idea of a hotel that offers nightmares and, and just and go crazy. So mm -hmm. you know, if anyone out there listening wants to uh, pay me a lot of money to buy that idea, please do. <laughs> <laughs> well, definitely. And Hollywood, Hollywood's overdue for something like that because they keep on running with the same rewashed stuff. They can't stop yeah. rebooting or the next comic book movie or what have you. It's like, uh -huh. and in a premise like that, I mean, that's a hub that could be used for, I mean, if, if Hollywood likes to milk things dry, why don't you have something that starts off a premise that's so open that you uh -huh. could milk it until it like, it, it yeah. Till it ran dry. Yeah, till it ran dry. I guess you know, <laughs> just do it. I mean, for you. I mean, there's no end to that. It's it's like a feature film version of Tales of the Crypt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or make a TV series like Fantasy Island, but each episode is a different person resolving wow. something through nightmares. Um, I'm staying in this hotel, but I don't know. Um, but that's that's the main one I would recommend. So uh, I've got various. Yeah. Now, when you were working on this, did you listen to Hotel California? Or is that not your <laughs> kind of music? It's not in California. He just told me. I, I know, I know, I know. But I thought maybe he was inspired in one, one way or the other. I'm listening. Pay attention. I'm paying yeah. attention. I'm just saying. It's a good song. It's a good song. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah. the only hotel song you could think of, right? <laughs> well, but it's also a good song. But yeah. It is a good song. Uh, it is a bit like Hotel California in that you can check out any time, but you can never leave. That's, uh, see, that's similar. See, yeah. uh, you, oh, come on, come on. See, I pay attention. I knew you'd get the reference. I knew you'd get the reference. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, well, what is the worst nightmare at this place? 
Well, each of the rooms has a different resident, a sort of spirit ah, or cool. creature residing within the room, and they colour the kind of nightmares that people have. So they will see these, they will be visited in their dreams by these spectres, ah, and they will. Cool. Um, and they always start off the same way with very, with a lot of violence perpetrated against the person who's dreaming. Um, and then they wake up and they discover, oh, it's, it, it's all right, it was just a dream. And then the, the longer they sleep in the hotel, the more the dreams permeate their subconscious, become more personal, uh, become more surreal and strange. And the people who are having the dreams can play a more active role. In Interesting. Okay, wait a second. So if I go to this hotel, can I... Can I yeah. choose what nightmare I want? Eventually. No. Well, kind of. I mean, <laughs> you can't. Others can. Yeah. So Becky gets Not the spider we're room. We're going to make you sleep in each room. So Becky gets no! the spider room is what I'm getting. Okay. But there are people oh. who've been visiting the hotel for so long that they've figured out how to sort of dream lucidly in the nightmare and control it and exact, enact their most sadistic fantasies. Oh, man. Oh. See, I'm liking this book already. This sort of book that has many layers. Many, many layers. I like this. Um, <laughs> yeah, so that, you put that, me in the spider room, I'm dreaming, I'm controlling them little buggers, and we're coming after you. Ah, uh, Becky, first you'd have to master it, though. And for you to do that, well, you'd have to true. be able to touch it. <laughs> and if you can't touch a uh -uh. dream spider... What can you touch? Nope. What kind of spider can you touch? Nope. I can point and say, get him. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. Well, you get to the lucid dreaming stage, and you you could bring somebody in to d kill the uh, spiders for you. Yeah. 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 Get Ooh. to the lucid dreaming stage. Hmm. What does it take to do that? I mean, that can't be easy, though, right? I mean, without, I guess, revealing too much of the book, you don't want to give it all away, but um, it's not no. its not that easy to get into. I mean, into lucid, lucid, lucid dreaming is a not an easy state to get into. It's a most practiced people. art, yeah. Yeah. You have to have a strong will and a strong mind and know what you're doing. Um, mm. Oh, well, I'm screwed. <laughs> <laughs> there is a thing called... <laughs> There, there is a thing, and it's it's a real thing, and I've done it a few times. It's called wake initiated lucid dreaming, where you go from straight from being awake into a lucid dream. Uh -huh. And uh, it, that's I, I've done it a few times. It's really tricky to not fall just fall asleep. Yeah, and that's where the challenge lies on that. Yeah, but I've done that. Uh, I'd like yeah. to just be able to go to sleep. Are you kidding? Me? <laughs> But I'm fascinated by dreams and by nightmares as well. And I've done, you know, my fair bit of research to try and have more dreams and more, and, and even, you know, occasional nightmares, because I think they're great minds for imagery and ideas. Mm. Um, and, you know, I, I, so I've, I've, you know, done all that. And I always wanted to write a story based around the concept of dreams and and nightmares and what else could be lurking because I'm, you know, there's always a suspicion that it's not just your brain uh, manifesting random imagery and stuff. There's always the, the, the feeling sometimes that there's something slightly deeper going on, like you're tapping into some hidden subconscious somewhere. And I like that idea. I like the idea that there's more to dreams than we think. Okay, and okay. So when when someone goes into a room for a specific monster, uh, a dream monster, what have you, like, do the realm that they go into, if it's like all like in their, is it like is it all in their dream, on their head? Are they actually like experiencing something, like in, in another plane? You know what I'm saying? Well, that's that's a debate that's had throughout the book oh. until about halfway through when it's fairly firmly resolved I what see. is happening. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. So it could be. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. Okay. Mm. All right. Now, can these monsters, these these nightmares, can they affect you outside the nightmare? Do they follow you home? 
they, well, yeah, I don't sure. want to give you know, yeah, yeah, too, don't give, too much. Don't give but, uh, too much. You know, Definitely tease. Definitely I'll, give us a tease. Uh, yeah, what I can tell what what you might think is is going on. It's not a traditional ghost story by any means. Um, oh, no, it's not. It doesn't sound like yeah. it. It does not sound like it. There's even artwork <laughs> related to this uh, to this novel. You mind if I pull up that artwork mm. real fast? I'm going to pull it up on the yeah, screen. Uh, let's see what I got. Well, while you're doing that, it's I want to say... It's amazing stuff, too. We... You know, we always we're always nice to our guests. You know, as best we can. We are. I mean, we may, we 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 kind of try. Yeah, it's well, early going. going. Yes. Yeah, but this <laughs> this is a fantastic story with for as far as movie potential goes. Oh yeah. I'm not kidding at all, and I wouldn't just say that. Um, well, a lot of a, a lot of always. books, a lot of <laughs> a lot of books are great to read and just hellish to adapt. Mm-hmm. Um, but this one sounds like it's got a massive potential for um, an adaptation. I mean, this could be like five seasons of Supernatural. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they can milk it that much. It could start off like season, like a special uh, nightmare season. And then fans mm-hmm. like it, so they're like, okay, well, let's do it again because they can go back, you know, to the hotel because there's more nightmares and there's more nightmares and there's more nightmares. Yeah, different rooms. Yeah. Yeah. Different guests, different eras. Yeah. Right. Yeah. See? I mean, thinking? and what's, what's cool That's is that scary. nowadays you've got HBO could do a series, you've got. Netflix and Amazon that do Stars. their own series. Yeah. Yeah. So, I need to, if well, I can get I it into the hands of the right people. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. That's always the trick. <laughs> yeah, let's find those people. And, and, and the, the problem, the, the difficulty with that is, is there's so much shit floating around that it's difficult, oh. it's almost impossible to get noticed. Mm-hmm. I think that's but true. Of not that's impossible. true of life. Who yeah. did the cover for this? The cover art was done by an artist called Olga Nose, who uh, she's a fantastic artist, and I uh, met her in a bar in Knoxville, Tennessee, about ten years ago. Um, oh, cool! He said we stayed in touch. Bogan Nose. Bog- Olga Olga Nose. Uh, Olga N O E S knows, um, and yeah, we stayed in touch. And when it came time um, for Bloodbound Books to publish Prince of Nightmares, I was asked if I had any ideas about cover art, and I had some ideas. And I really pushed for uh, Olga to do the the cover art because you know, I was a big fan of her artwork, and she agreed to do it. And she also agreed to do the various promotional uh, pieces of artwork as well of each of the um, the creatures that inhabit these rooms, which yeah. are printed off as bookmarks I, to hand out at uh, events. I absolutely love this cover. Yeah, it's cool. Absolutely love it. It's quite it old is, school, which I wanted. Yes, yes. It's also very creepy. Mm. Yeah, this artwork uh, definitely sells uh, Definitely sells the uh, the premise here. I mean, I'm, looking, I'm looking at the character art. The crab? Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um... What is what does she do? What's what's her uh, what's her thing? What's her mo? The crab wasn't very isn't broadly sketched out in the book, but it's a it's a, a naked female who walks primarily on her you know, on all fours and has a long tongue. Oh, um, okay. And she's she's not a nice character. Anyway. Oh, she's not nice. She's she's, she's no, not, okay. She's, I think I dated her once. Does she have tricks with her tongue? Like, what does she do with her tongue? Like, is she like a like a succubus? Uh, succubus. <laughs> <laughs> Many things, I think. Many things. Okay. Mm-mm. So I don't. I don't want even want yeah. to know. Ooh, man. You probably don't. You know what though? Okay, let, let me ask you something. 
if it was your last day, if you knew you were going to die, if you knew like you only had a few hours left, whatever, and for some reason you want to spend time at this hotel, and you want the best nightmare you could have, because this is it. This is it. I don't know why you decided that this is the way you're going to go, but this is the way you're going to go. Which nightmare would, would you want to face? Oh, God. Yeah. I bet no one's asked him that question before. No. Uh, I bet not either. Yeah, see, that's one thing we could tackle once we get a list of all these nightmares. Because I'm curious now. I'm real curious. So we have the crab. Uh, <laughs> uh, and we also have this fat slug looking thing. It looks like the caterpillar from... Uh... Oh, yeah. From Bugs Life? Alice in Wonderland. Alice oh. in Wonderland. Oh, Bugs Life too. Yeah. Hey. The black worm. The black worm. Um, yeah, he's the worm. So what happens here? What and happens look at him? his teeth. Uh, oh, don't tell me. Don't tell me. I can figure this out. If you don't wash your ass. Burrows under the skin. If you don't wa- it's a nightmare about Kissy. not washing your ass and you get worms. I'm just saying. Worms. <laughs> no. Dog worms. Don't. It looks no. like a delic. No. He looks this like does he not look burrow like a burrow under dog. your skin. It's he gets under dog. your skin. No, dog worms. You, you dogs have worms. You burrow under your skin. Oh. Oh, oh geez. Then yeah. you'd it, it, be itching all over. Like like a you know, like a right. mess or something. Oh, ooh, 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 no, 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 no. Yes. No. Why? <laughs> Cockroach larvae. No. Uh, <sighs> not doing it. I'll drink. I'll, you I know, did I'll just, not I'll, say that. You cannot blame me for that. I just I'll just sip on this absinthe over here. Um. So. <laughs> So that's the second monster uh, nightmare. Uh, how many mm. nightmares are in this book? Uh, there's about 13, 12 or 13. There is within the book itself, the hotel, which is called the, Ball- the Ballador, um, has a guidebook within it that details each of the, each of the specters, each of the residents in each of the rooms. Uh-huh. And so that, that book is referred back to um, throughout uh, the novel. Um, I think to answer your question, the one if I were to talk with anyone, or if I wanted were to have a dream, you know, about about any with any of the, the residents, I think it would be the master of the house, because mm-hmm. he's the most rare. He ve- he only he very rarely makes an appearance. What does he do? He he's a conversationalist. Ah, he's so the he'll talk to you. Guy, he'll talk to you. Um, and he'll that present you with, <laughs> with sort of yeah, but that's that's the thing about him. He'll talk to you and he'll present you with ideas and concepts and images that uh, might terrify so he, more. He'll, he'll convert you. He'll try to convert you more to, than any other. Okay. Violence. So yes. he's a conversationalist. So he tries to warp your mind through conversation. Is what he's saying. He'll present like mm-hmm. bad ideas and see if you can navigate through it. Like. Um, you know what? I can't even present ideas. I can't even present things that we could be talking about here on YouTube anymore because of the way things are now. But you know what I'm saying? Like he he'll present like a bad idea. You know what I'm saying? Like some maybe uh, yeah. eight chan level bad ideas. Some um, yeah, that stuff. And he's very persuasive <laughs> as well. That's the thing about him. Ah. So he's like a Richard Spencer sort of person. Yeah. <laughs> Is that what's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> He's a not bad man. Not necessarily out to terrify ah. so much as recruit. Oh, well, you know. Is, ah. I think that would be the... If I were going to die, I might as well be recruited. Ah. There you yeah. go. Yeah. Unless you have an interesting job after you die, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think the giant is, is, is one that I would not want to run into. He would just kill you, right? He'd just straight up kill you. Like that's what he looks like he would do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, oh, that's he, he reminds you're just me stereotyping of giants. Now, come mm-hmm. on, a lot of them are just big, gentle beasts okay. that are completely misunderstood. Mm-hmm. They're not all trying to crush your skull. Hashtag not all. I'm not. Yeah. Um. Not yeah. All giants. But he reminds me of one of the Cenobites from Hellraiser. Yeah. <laughs> 
I get that vibe. And they give me the creeps. Or something from uh, so, Silent Hill. Yeah. Yeah, he looks more like um, torture and um, mayhem than he would be um, just kill you outright. That's yeah. what scares me. You know, he's probably the one who uh, butchers you so that the cook can uh, process yeah, the meat. Slowly. And- you know, I mean, he'll butcher and process. No, no, no. And that, prepares. You don't understand that hook is for bl- blocks of ice. Oh, he, okay. Not a meat hook. He just no, it's not for meat at all. He's he's a in a former life was an ice man, literally oh, an ice man. Okay. He's just going around, and that's why he's so big from carrying those uh, giant blocks of ice up five flights of stairs to to serve his fellow. Human beings. Gotcha. I find, uh, you are so full of crap. <laughs> <laughs> I'm buying it too. I'm like what? I can read you a little uh, passage about the giant if you want. Oh, yes. that'd be yes, awesome. That'd be please, great. Please, please. Okay. So this is when uh, uh, this is at a point in the story when when there's pretty much uh, when during the nightmares uh, have while they have control of the hotel. They'd had the run of the place only a few minutes and already they were redecorated. A sound filled the stairway, a low snorting rasp like a Clydesdale with a cold. He looked up as a grotesque giant lumbered into view on the top landing, dragging something behind him. He had a head of knotted, twisted scar tissue and wore an overcoat fashioned from blood and tar. In his left hand was a meat hook skewering the ankles of a skinless, gurgling man who lay sprawled out and twitching on the floor behind him. It had to be Victor New, one of the top floor guests. So. Mm. Oh, yeah, there you go. There you go. And, wait, and Victor's seeing this in his in his nightmare. Or this, no, no, yeah. no. Whoa. Okay. All right. I'm digging this. Where can people get this book? <laughs> Where can people find this book? On Amazon, right? <laughs> just about. Just about everywhere. Yeah, yeah, Amazon. I know. I know. I wish it wasn't the case. But yeah, Amazon. <laughs> They're the uh, future overlords. Uh, you know, I talked about this with Brian Keene during the 24-hour show. It's like we gave them a lot of power. We gave them a lot of presents, and now they're <clears throat> pretty much take it over. That's it. Yeah. yeah you know? I think uh, there needs to be something... Something... A new kind of service specifically for horror. That'd be I don't nice. think horror. Yeah, I, I don't think horror that. is well served by Amazon at all, or bookshops in general. Um, no, I, I don't know about bookstore. Well, probably not like mainstream, like Barnes and Noble. They're not. They're not doing it. I don't, I'm not sure about indie bookstores either. Um, but it's like, it's like an Amazon. You can make. I don't know if this is. I don't know if this is a bad thing by Amazon or whatever, but you can make, it looks like you can make a living just writing crap, literal crap, and not even yeah. caring about it, you know? Um, I were looking at book covers on the last show by what Lawrence, Lawrence who, Lawrence, um, the name is escaping me, but the the author just pretty much writes, like, just crap, just stuff. and A the, lot of it, though. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of shit. Out. He cranks them out. Multiple volumes a year. Yeah, we're talking well, about like the trick. Scarnado type, uh, not Scar- Sharknado type stuff. I don't know what Scarnado is, but <laughs> Sharknado type stuff. You know, um, it's it's. Damn it, Jesse! You yeah. just invented a whole new genre. Uh, <laughs> might be. Oh, Should, maybe the Green Fairy's talking to me. Maybe the absence is kicking in. I don't know. Maybe so. Ah. Well, that's the way that you're cut off. No? That's the way that the Amazon marketplace works. If you flood the market with quantity, you can game the system. Because unless you know what you're looking for already on Amazon, you can't browse it properly. You can't see what's there. And if you and if you attempt to go by genre, you're going to get thousands of titles by the same author just because they're new or because of some algorithm mistake or, or because of the way that they've uh, tagged them in their different uh, obscure genres so they get marked as bestsellers and all, all that kind of stuff and by doing that people can can game it and you, know, you can't you can't browse Amazon the way that you could 
um, in a properly curated uh, horror genre section of a of a physical store. You're yeah. right about that. Which the- is which is which ru- really runs counter to one of the uh, concepts that Amazon helped create, and that was the idea of the long tail. Um, yeah, and they're they're cutting off their own fucking long tail that they invented and the 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 which is the concept that in any media there is the small large head of the snake and that's not a fuck well it is a metaphor but it's not a sexual metaphor <laughs> it's a <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it's a content metaphor um this is, these are the movies, for example, the movies that make it into theaters and make it, uh, you know, that everybody's heard of, and the and the bestseller books, and then, but that's a small number wise, but the rest of the snake is where all this other shit is, and it's not mm-hmm. all shit. A lot of it's really good quality stuff that you may really want to find out about. Traditionally, before the internet, you had almost no chance of finding this content. Yeah. Um, Amazon was really great about bringing out the long tail titles and making people able to find these things. Yeah. And now they they've they've totally swallowed their own tail mm-hmm. on this thing, and so it becomes actually harder to find that. Mm. And they're they're kind of backtracking on the whole concept that caught, brought them into existence. Yeah. Well, well I mean, chasing if. if Sorry, I was going to say, if Jeff Bezos wasn't busy having affairs, maybe he could figure shit out, you know, or, or focus on the business. But I don't think he really – I think I think they just want to expand. I mean, they're even rolling out books. It's all stores. about ad revenue now. Yeah. That as well. And that's a problem for us because to get advertisers, you need to be family-friendly, and you've got to be sharing family-friendly content and nothing that goes against the moral code, which is exactly what uh, interesting and provocative literature – does and and yeah, genre literature, true. even horror stuff that's, that's not true. particularly offensive or wouldn't or would still be on bookshelves 20, 30 years ago, is now getting hidden because it doesn't support the family values of these advertisers. That that is so it's true, lost. and it's I you know I've said this before on, on on this on this channel on for something different really about YouTube. Um, you know, YouTube's a big platform, right? But yet, mm-hmm. they get threatened by advertisers. Advertisers say we're going to pull out because someone did a hit piece on like PewDiePie, or someone said this, that. What about you guys? What it's like? But in the and YouTube forgets that they are like one of the main platforms to advertise on, and like you can reach so many mm-hmm. people more so than you could on like you know traditional TV or cable. So it's like, why would you like? You're the one who's holding the power. You should be. Oh, but you depend so much on the revenue that you that you cave to them. You're like, okay, yeah. okay, I'll do what you want. I'll do what you want. It's like, mm, ah, it seems backward to me. But it is. But related to our content, related to like especially horror horror literature. Yeah, man. I mean, I see a, there's a I see where Amazon could in the future. Hopefully, that doesn't happen. Go. You know what? Horror doesn't look good for us. You know, all these mm-hmm. stories about killing and murder and assault and raping and uh, all this stuff. Yeah. Stephen King, you're not in this, in this, this, in this either. Um, <laughs> don't, don't act like you are. You know, let's just take those stories and get rid of them. Let's just get rid of them. Yeah. I could see it. Stephen, yeah. It's like Stephen King would be all right. You know, there's, there's, but it's the, it's yeah. more extreme horror that would be the interesting stuff, the up and coming stuff. And they're really, Provocative stuff, which is yeah, the stuff and that's I, the thing too. I like. like Stephen King would be spared, and people be like, "Oh, he'll, he'll get yeah. a pass because of some bullcrap." Be like, "Have you have you read his stuff? Like he says the n word left and right." You know, it, I'm not saying it makes him racist; it doesn't. But if you want to be like family values, it's like, well, what's that? You know, he he has scenes where uh, kids are having sex. What's that? He has scenes where uh, kids are dying. What's that? You know, oh. But definitely, um, Jack Ketchum, mm-hmm. his books. Oh, Girl Next Door. Yeah. Oh, you, no, no, that would give her that in a heartbeat. Of course, absolutely. Of course, I'm getting heated talking about a future I don't want. 
<laughs> it's not here yet, you know. Amazon's not doing this no. yet, and I hope they don't. Ever. But it's it, it's already happening to uh, to extreme erotica and things like that. And this is not stuff yeah. that I I yeah. write or I read, but it concerns me because once they're done getting rid of those guys, they're going to come. I noticed they're that. Gonna extreme horror. I noticed that monster that. is never satisfied. Yeah. No, it is not. It'll it's. As soon as it eats one, it'll eat another. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And and you know what, man? I totally know what you mean on this. Um, just not to promote Dead Men's Home anymore, but we had a anthology a few years ago called No Safe Word. There was like horror erotica, and I was going pretty hardcore right. on it. I used some terminology in the introduction, like you used the word rape in the introduction. Mm-hmm. Um, I used it in context to describe like it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Because Amazon picked it up, I guess. I guess mm-hmm. people do actually screen the stuff, believe it or not. I guess, mm-hmm. or maybe a bot picked it up and they had someone else look at it, and they're like, "No, this book won't pass." Why? Content. What's wrong with mm-hmm. the content? They wouldn't really. They would never specify. Long story. No, short, they never do. It got it got blocked. And it got blocked and it got banned. Man, they got they're gonna terminate my whole account. Yeah. I was like, okay, and fine. that's. But I tell I you mean, what it did. Technically, though. I tell you what it did. Oh yeah, go ahead. Because it actually, I think it is on Amazon, because I published it through a back door. I yeah. went to, uh, I went through like Lulu, <laughs> Lulu dot com, whatever. They have a, they have a, uh, what do you call it? Uh, I guess a extended reach program. For the same amount of like royalties you get from Amazon, I think it's actually a little bit more generous. Uh, your your product, your book would actually be featured on, on different. You know, distribution platforms, meaning Amazon, and I think it is there. I think if you mm-hmm. search for it, you might be able to find it. Let me test it out real fast. But I think you can. So I just sorry. Well, Christopher Triana had this issue recently with the. I know you guys had him on. Did you talk to him about uh, the it's body art coloring book? Oh no. Okay. Well, yeah, we talked about it. But yes. Is that not yes, coming out? Is that not coming out? It's out. Okay. It's out. It is out. It, it, it was meant to be coming out for months and months, but they kept every every time they tried to put it on Amazon, it was getting taken down. And I think it's on there mm-hmm. now. It oh, is effectively, man. it's kind of like a cartoon, violent cartoon pornography. But yeah. the thing is, pornography is legal. You know, there's nothing illegal about it. No, there's nothing um, illegal about it. Right. They were just censoring it because of effectively, the yeah. I mean, and they can say, well, you know, we're a bookseller, we can decide what we sell and what we don't sell. But when you monopolize the market to that extent, it is censorship. Right. Because it you're is. not allowing people to play, you know, and play the game. And it, you're not allowed, like, you I totally agree. To I totally agree that it is. And you know what? And there'll be, of course, there'll be libertarians and then people, I guess, on some people on the left, I don't know, the politics, but you know who they are. They'll be like, oh, yeah. well, it's a private platform. People are like, man, if the private platform is so big where it is the only platform, it is essentially yeah. just a governing body at that point. Mm-hmm. Okay? That's what we're talking about here. It's reached that, lo- that yeah. level. And yeah, uh, no safe word is, is the one. It, wow, look at that. It's it's actually technically banned. Like, I could not put it up uh-huh. on, their, on their KDP, whatever, without a fear of being uh, having my whole account terminated. But it's up there. So I wonder how they did that. I wonder how they put it up there because I know uh, Amazon's crazy. Uh, I need very carefully. Very carefully. <laughs> that's that's man. Sorry, I know that was. That's. Now you want to smack me? <laughs> no, no, this gets heated. No, this this gets heated. It gets me heated. Is what I'm thinking. No, I agree with you. Hmm. Yeah, I, they there, there have been occasional calls for uh, breaking up certain platforms as monopolistic just like they did with Ma Bell back in the 70s 80s mm-hmm. um, and other uh, other companies before that that had monopolies and they had to be uh, broken up into smaller companies so that they could allow for competition and uh, our Amazon is absolutely a monopoly when it comes to online 
book sales. Yes. Mm-hmm. And book sales but in general. That's not a, but that's not a, a law anymore, is it? No, no what ha- Congress has the power to go in and say, you are a monopoly and negotiate with the company to um, spin off uh, divisions into being their own companies. Um, mm. And so, um, out, which allows for um, more growth in the in that uh, mm. industry. And yeah, it needs to be do done. That. It needs to be done. It does. Mm-hmm. Google needs to be Google needs to be uh, broken up for one. I Amazon agree with that. needs to be broken up. Google, Amazon, uh, uh, Facebook. Facebook, yeah. I mean, I don't know how you would do it. I don't know what would you break it up and have multiple competitors. It's uh, that'd be great because what happens here is like Facebook, Twitter, YouTube—they're all in the same boat. If they if they all agree to get rid of someone, they do that. They just that just happened. They just banned mm-hmm. like Milo Yiannopoulos and Alex Jones, all that under the guys of like like alt right, like all completely. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know I know they say some crazy things, but Alex Jones is a conspiracy guy. He talks about frogs turning gay because of the water. You know, he says some crazy things about Sandy Hook, but he, he, he disavowed that. He changed it. You know, he was like, you know, I was wrong about that, and I was going by what I saw at the time. Of course, I don't agree with everything he says. No. Well, the, the, way, the way you know that it's a monopoly is that they all the platforms agreed on the, the whole list to, at the same time. Yeah. That's crazy to me. Because that means like, what, what about us? What about us who publish horror, publish exactly. content that's about killing, murder, assault, and stuff like that? What if they look at us and be like, you know uh-huh. what, there's a problem. I thought about this today on Facebook. What if Facebook looked at the stuff I publish? Um, and we, we have a question in the Facebook group. Uh, if you were a cannibal, like like what part of the body would you eat? Why, why would I put that there? Why would I put that there? Because mm. it's it's horror related. It's not like we're actual cannibals or anything. Jesus Christ. But, mm-hmm. you know, what if Facebook was like, no, man, it's too extreme. Oh man, no, this is not going to work. We're going to get rid of you. You know, mm-hmm. we're just going to get rid of hard in general. Um, who, who's going to defend us? It'd be mm-hmm. too late, man. No one. Well, nobody. Nobody. <laughs> no. Well, your point about uh, it's an awkward conversation to get into, but your point about hard yeah, erotica. It's, it's all right with me. I'm good. I'm good with anything. <laughs> hey, before the show well, started, we're talking po- about balls and stuff. <laughs> I think. Yeah. But your your point about horror erotica and rape is a, is a good one because uh, you know anything that touches on sexual violence now um, in an entertainment context, you know there's so the the left leaning more liberal uh, people who would defend art are not so. Are often not so generous when it comes to things that include sexual violence, and, and a lot of horror does. Spot on on that, a hundred percent. And that's yeah, yeah, and that's kind of how it, I think it would come in, because I think you would lose a lot of the people that you expect to defend you. Oh, but those people have changed their minds in the last few years. The people who used to defend the arts are now out killing the arts yeah. yeah in many ways in many ways and the funny thing about that is uh they it, it's like they'll say you know what we don't want uh like you know rape or whatever in in, in entertainment but yet there's still like erotica and erotica is still mm-hmm. doing what it used to do just it has to be more clever about it it's still like, and I'm not saying it's all rape. I'm saying, but you know what I'm talking about, ladies? Come on, the rape fantasy. You know what the fuck I'm talking about? Jesus, um, right? Does, yeah, right, Becky, women have rape fantasies. And it's like it's a, a real thing. There's a lot of erotica. Okay? It's a real thing. There, there is a lot of erotica. Like that, yeah. Even even uh, uh what's it? Uh, Fifty Shades of Grey had that shit. Just had to be kind of clever about it. Oh, it oh, it's yep. a contract. Oh, it, which, by the way, not to digress any further, but those those BDSM contracts are real. They do actually exist. I walked into a court <laughs> hearing where it was being discussed in length in front of a judge who looked absolutely embarrassed because we're talking about Texas, a very conservative <laughs> county of Texas. 
<laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> um, it was it was pretty hardcore stuff. I was like, oh man, I'm gonna I'm gonna need to excuse myself from this courtroom. What? Um, anyway, yes, yes. <laughs> they came for the erotica because That's there's too too hardcore. So now they have to be careful about it. And now you know mm-hmm. who's gonna stop them when they come to horror for being too hardcore. Yeah, exactly. Mm-mm-mm. And the thing that Amazon has, you know, its its big weapon is the Kindle. The because Kindle. if you wanna if you wanna set up an alternative or a horror focused marketplace, like a, a sh- like a shutter for for books. Your problem is you're not going to get the ebook market because. Yeah, because Kindle has like 90% of that shit. Yeah. Yep. Barnes so and Noble. The answer is. Yeah, Barnes and Noble had Nook, but Nook. Who has a Nook? Somebody. Some poor bastard. Yep. <laughs> yep. I don't uh, even know what that is. Uh, a Nook is like a. Is it like a breakfast Nook? It's like a place in, the, in your house. <laughs> it's. Uh, I, I, that's Shut what up. About, right? I know what that is. It, it sits right next to the cranny. <laughs> <laughs> um, man. Granny or cranny? So we better hope. Like I know I was making fun of the author before Lawrence something. Jesus Christ! I just publishes crap. But there's another one. Uh, Chuck, Chuck, <laughs> Chuck Tingle. Chuck Tingle. Oh yeah. As yeah, long sure. as someone like him can get away and make money publishing, like just. The stuff he publishes, which is like outlandish, like it's like it's funny stuff, but it's, it's satire. Yeah, yeah. But as long as he has a a strong following that, that enjoys his stuff, I mean, Amazon's just gonna cut that off, are they? No. Is he? I mean, maybe they could. I mean, uh, no. Wait, maybe no, they could be. Alex, if, no. Alex Jones has a strong following. People just cut him off, and he just finds another place to go. But he, but he wasn't. Yeah, yeah. He, but was he making money for the platform? No. And that's what it all comes down to. Mm. Mm. Yeah. You're right about that. Man. Uh, you know what could help? If some of these, like, Silicon Valley... More absinthe? Like, more absinthe would probably Liquor? help. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe I'll just... I'll sip on that. I'll sip on that. Because, man, this conversation is me pissed me off. <laughs> no, it's just, it's just. Sorry. It's the, no, 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 no. It's okay. It's just the thought of Amazon just going to that degree because so far they haven't. But they, I mean, they have in small ways, but they haven't completely. But they're already choking horror, yeah. as far as I can see. But they, okay, tell this. me about that because I, I'm, I'm, I haven't seen it. They are. They are. I just don't. It's just. I mean, they're you not. Don't? It's. It's not a great. Uh, marketplace for books anyway anymore. Mm. It's not a very very browsable or user-friendly or searchable system on Amazon. And if you go looking for horror, if you want to see, well, what's new in horror? You can't find it. You know, you have to go into the genres and you have to go looking, and it's not even listed as a genre at the top. You've got to go into sci-fi or fantasy. It's hidden away in there in a sub-genre. Really? Yeah, and then you look in that and it'll have your new releases. And what are your new releases? Oh, Bram Stoker's Dracula. That's new. Someone's put it out in a with a different cover or something like this. You know, it's like you can't, mm-hmm. it's not curated the way that a bookshop would curate, curate it so that you can see what's actually happening in the world of horror. The, the kind of things that an actual bookseller should be doing, Amazon doesn't do it. It doesn't promote horror. Well, it's possible and, to find it and A lot of people don't realize that the you know the list of um you may also like mm-hmm. that's often paid for yeah those are paid ads mm-hmm. oh mars girl shut up what see i try to censor myself right there i know it's been doing horrible but the producer's been looking at me he's like hey <laughs> hey you need to stop with those f-bombs now <sighs> <laughs> okay stop fucking swearing man i know right jesus <sighs> The ghost of Bob Ross is looking down upon me and in, in shame. <sighs> that's the absence. I'm sure that's the absence talking right there. 
Yeah. Hello. Did Hello? I just freak you guys out? Oh, yes. Okay. You were just you were just on a ramble there, and we were no. letting you go. <laughs> no. It's yeah, okay. we were. We just wanted to see where that was going. Yeah. No. That's okay. That's okay. We're scared. Uh, I mean, scared. what I what I should say is that you know any writing career, any publishing credits I have, I owe to Amazon because and and the internet, you know, and, and the explosion of ebooks and all the rest, because that's what made it possible for me to be uh, an author. I would still be struggling away trying to get my first publishing credit, I'm sure, if not for the current marketplace. But it's it's turned. It was a wonderful place for things like Bizarro and Horror a few years ago. It was a great way to find, it was the only way to find unique and interesting writing because it wasn't in bookstores. It was yeah. only on Amazon. But it's turned now. It's gone, it's gone the other way. And yeah. so you need to take it somewhere else. And what you were saying earlier about the, the genres it's is, is uh, absolutely correct. <laughs> and I've noticed that other publishers, especially in horror, they, uh, when they have book listings, they don't list it in horror. If you look at the yeah. categories, they'll list it anything but. Like, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it's interesting. But then, oh. the, which then just goes back to what our delightful guest was saying, that uh, how, you know, then how do you find those books? Well, yeah. You try if to... they're not, if there's... If there's no category for them, how do you find them? Exactly. That's, I mean, that's a problem. And that's why some publishers are trying to put their books in front of people's eyes using different different categories, it looks like. So they're trying to adapt to the landscape, trying to adapt to the, to, you know, the change. But it's, then is someone just going to look at the book and be like, eh, this doesn't really fit that category. You kind of stretch it, bro. Right. You know? Yes. Right. So, so if you... And, and this is this is a, an additional uh, dynamic that is a problem, and that is, you know, reader expectations. If you go into a, you know, a sci-fi category and you find this book and you go, oh, this looks kind of interesting and it's hardcore horror, that person is likely to be kind of pissed. Hardcore erotica, horror. <laughs> yeah. In space. Oh my Captain, lord. Captain Buttfucker. <laughs> it, it's oh, a, God, no. Sorry, sorry. Uh, that is, that that a, title that has been book. mentioned every episode there for is like a real three book. weeks. Oh, no. It's a real book. I'm sorry. <laughs> I apologize. It, it gets brought up every show. <laughs> it does. It does. And I feel bad saying it. it. I do feel bad saying it in front of Mr. McNee because he's so proper. And uh, <laughs> I, I just now I want to wash my mouth out. I really do. I'm not even joking. I do. Um, Here in the U.S., we understand that there's a word called proper, and we have this vague <laughs> notion of what it means, but we don't really, you know, abide by it. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, not really. No, they don't. Yeah. No, they don't. don't have a strong definition of what that means. Well, mm. I live in Glasgow, which has a which is not known for being proper or polite or. <laughs> Uh, uh, is primarily known for using, you know, curse words as commas. So you know, no, no for me. I hear so many good things about that town. I really oh, it's amazing. Do. If the, if it was if the sun shone, it would be the greatest city in Europe. <laughs> and and I, that's absolutely true. <laughs> Unfortunately, the sun rarely shines. So. You know, that's a shame. But on the days that it does, it's not. You know, I I live in Seattle, so I can really understand that concept. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think that's fairly similar. Yeah. yeah. The amount of rainfall, that's, that's pretty much even with what we get here, yeah. I would love to go there. I would love to go to Me Glasgow. too. You should, definitely should. I recommend it to everyone. Oh. Okay. I've never been either. We're going. Definitely, they'll have to go. Yeah. Oh, we could we could set up a Dead Man's Tone meet there. Uh, who would meet? Like five people. Uh, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> my uh, my publisher Mark uh, Chicarone from uh, Bloodbound Books actually oh, yeah. uh, came and visited last year. Um, <gasps> really? He has, he has two 
authors that I'm, I think there's just two of us in Scotland. There's me and Alistair Rennie as well. And he came and met up with us oh, yeah. both, which was fantastic. You know, hey, because we could go as a group. I've, we could go as a, yeah, I can t- talk with them and see if maybe we can go together. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It'd be interesting. Maybe a little European tour or something. Yeah, Dead yeah. Man Con. Dead Man Con. <laughs> that, that sounds bad. This is a con job. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> it's like that. What was that concert? What was that freaking? Ah, oh shit. The the fire or something. You know what I'm talking about? The the fire concert thing. Oh yeah. The tour. I think it was. Oh, just, oh yeah, the one in the Bahamas. Fire. Yeah, fire yeah. Festival. Yeah, man. The, it was. The, that was a, that was a con. That was a yeah. different kind of a con. Yeah. Bad, 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 bad. Um, but. Hey guys, did you know that cannibalism is now legal? Where? In the U.S. Where? Um, I think. Hey Becky, what state was it? Becky. 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 Oh, that's okay. She we can just we can make things up. It was in Texas. <laughs> it was in Texas. Let's go, Becky. Well, that. <laughs> Had to happen sooner or later. We caught her. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Becky. I, I, was it um, Oregon? Or... Becky, what state, yes, legalized, what state legalized cannibalism? What? Whoops. Hold on. Because I wonder... um, it wasn't a state. It was Canada. Oh. oh. <laughs> Even better. <laughs> oh, hey. hey, Kelly. It, cannibalism is legal now. <laughs> You can, uh, yeah, if you wanted to, you can eat someone. You can, you can give it a try. Some it's fava beans and a nice Chianti. <laughs> you get, you get. Or, or, or Riesling. I don't know what goes with, you know, is it, is it a red wine that goes with human flesh? <laughs> I'm I don't not know. sure. I'm, I would just Ew. go with whiskey or beer. <laughs> yeah, there you absence. go. There was a bill. Or scotch. A nice Scott. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there was a. Yeah. Um. There's a there was a bill that they presented to make cannabis legal, and somebody typed the word wrong, and it became cannibalism. Ah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Are you? And Man, the House that must of have been a late night it. session. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the House was he... of Commons passed it. No kidding. Okay, wait a second. Was this guy high? When you know he wrote what's this? you know what's great about this? What's... You know what's great about this? What's great? It just proves that nobody fucking reads the bills. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Or was this their plan all along? Yeah. <laughs> it's it's got to happen sometime. You know? Well, I guess they figured that if you get high, you get munchies. But That's hey. right. <laughs> mm-hmm. You can uh, just eat your dealer. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, you don't eat your dealer. No. No. Oh. No. What? No. No. But, you know, you, you definitely want to eat someone. You got you to gotta have, a, like, a fat friend with you or something, you know? Um, oh. You know, for those of you who do not live in... Uh, states where cannabis is legal, I should let you know that there are no more dealers. Well, I mean, there probably <laughs> are, but there really aren't. You just go to the store. I mean, they have special stores. They're just they're right next to 7-Eleven or whatever. Well, here in Texas, you really? know, we don't have that, yeah. so you still have to know someone who yeah, knows someone. Yeah, we don't either. Yeah, but it's, it's pretty easy to know someone. Uh, not that I know anybody. I didn't put that out there. Not that I know anybody. You know what's uh-huh. interesting? I you wonder, just heard about that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I wonder if there was anyone out there who got excited about the slip-up. was like, finally, yes, finally it's legal. <laughs> well, the, the thing is, is I, I wish we had our resident uh, legal consultant to, to ask about this because, I mean, it might act – I mean, you, you could – you could argue that yeah, this is what the law says. If you're well, going to nitpick about things in about the law, then you got to hold the law to the nitpick to be nitpicked right back, so to speak. 
I don't know that that makes yeah. sense. Here's what here's what I think. No. Uh, over you know the world is getting pretty crowded. We've got a <laughs> lot of got a lot of mouths to feed. Uh, mm-hmm. Toilet green is people. Well, exactly. And you got an obesity problem, green. and you got an uh, obesity yeah, yeah. problem. And, uh, as well. You got to solve that somehow. Uh, yeah. You got hungry well, mouths. The easiest solution. Mm-hmm. Best yeah. solution is to is to start eating people. Now, yeah. soil and green is a it's a big shock in that movie when they reveal the soil and green people because they kept it hidden. Now, a right. sensible, forward thinking government, which is what I understand Canada has, uh, would would m- make people okay with the idea of cannibalism. They would ease you into it yeah. you know, before, before introducing it. And they would just start dropping little hints every so often that this is where we're mm-hmm. going to go. Like maybe a little misprint in a cannabis bill, just to get people thinking about the idea, <laughs> just to get people used to the concept. So not like another five, yeah. ten, you can actually start talking about it in earnest. And then maybe about five, ten years after that, you can actually you know start selling uh, human meat in stores. Just, oh, you know, look at that. protein bar. You know, yeah. when you have that big party catered, you got to be specific. You got to ask questions about what they mean by finger sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my Lord. <laughs> we want finger Yuck. food over here. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, and in Chinese no. food, they have that uh, Hunan, I'm not eating it. Hunan style Chinese food. I always was questioned about that. Every time I read them, I'm like, Human? You mean human? Human? Like, what's, what's what? What? Do you, what? Is that a slip? What? What is this? Are you just telling me straight up you're serving human? What's going on here? <laughs> what's going on here? Is my dyslexia kicking in? Am I reading too much into this? Yeah. What's kick? Probably. You, you are. Yes. You're, you're. You're reading too much into it. Maybe. You're. You're. I'm not eating. Are reading too little into it? I should say. Yeah. They don't let me. Be- yeah. <laughs> they don't like it when I go to that Chinese restaurant. They, they don't like it. I ask. I act all. I ask all. I ask way too many questions. Well, that's like, because you meat? ask for dishes based on ethnicity of uh, the meat. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. just not right. That's not cool. No. <laughs> no. no. They don't taste different. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I hear. But imagine no. the brave new world we'll be living in when you're spending all day in traffic or at work or talking in the bar with your food. You know, effectively, you're looking at the people around you. Oh, God. And any one of them, you could end up eating at some point. And you're going to start no. looking at people a little differently. Oh, man. That would no. raise all I'll sorts of... I'll be a vegetarian. That would raise all sorts <laughs> of situations, though, because think about it. You would have... Uh, you would, instead of having grass fed human beings, or you'd have like <laughs> corn fed, they'd be fed a bunch of like uh, free range, free range, you'd be sipping oh on Mountain God. Dew and Dr. Pepper, uh, just getting all sorts of corn syrup in them, eating burgers or whatever, e- eating just junk food, getting all like, I guess, nice and stuff, I guess, and mm-hmm. they're fat and serve it up, man. Guess, guess what, honey? We're having the Andersons out for dinner this week. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No. No. Oh, man. No. Just but then, no. But then you're no. into the area of, like, people wanting, oh, what if, man, like, you won't specific know where flavors. They, where they've been and, yeah. and ew. Mm. Well. Yeah, no, but no. Becky makes it interesting. No. Because uh, you would have to introduce a, a sort of a new frame of mind, a new scale of attractiveness for looking at people <laughs> because pretty much the way we look at people is as sexual conquest now you do i'm sure there are psychosexual cannibals out there who want to uh eat people they're attracted to sexually but i think you would want to separate the two in your mind mm-hmm. so you would have people that you view attractive sexually and people that you view as attractive for how good you think they would taste. And oh, I would... Maybe I could just eat you up. Wait, yeah. hold on now. <laughs> <laughs> how did you mean that? <laughs> no. That's, well, yeah. You're, it, you're it, just it, delicious. <laughs> wow, stop it. So, yeah. When, so All the sitcom situations. 
when they call you sugar tits, what are they? Is that like a what, what does that mean? No. No. Who the fuck Gross. is who the fuck is Jimmy L? Jimmy L. In the chat. Yeah. In the chat. Hey SK, I'm gonna dig up your father. Oh, fuck. The shit. Oh, Jimmy L is probably a sock account by the same uh, uh, same guy who's probably contributed to. Hey. By the way, I'm gonna go ahead and, and ban this guy. Actually, because what the hell, dude? You, you go, you go into a chat, and this is what you say. Like, okay, Jimmy L. Hey, S K. I'm what gonna the hell? Like, what, what is this? Like, why do you have so much hate in your heart, man? Like, we don't even know who you are, what you do, and nor do we care. Like, why do you have so much hate in your heart, like that? You know what? I don't have time for that. Why would you disrespect I, 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 someone so much? I would just remove I mean, and report. Because, but this is... Uh, this I is don't know. I'm, put, I'm feeling the love. I've never really had a hater before. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, SK, you're, you're somebody. <laughs> Holy shit. Make it a name for yourself. Yeah. <laughs> man, man, oh, man. Uh, which, wow. by the way, we have like, a, what, 11 dislikes? Yeah, it's... 12 me, now. 12 yeah. now. Great. You know what? Just, you know what? Just everybody oh. dislike. Everybody dislike. Just make it the most disliked stream because really the way YouTube works <laughs> is the more engagements. So listen to me, you floater. The more you engage with us, you're only helping us. You're only <laughs> helping us when you engage with us. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, that's <laughs> how this works. And now you're hidden on the channel Jesus. because um, I don't have time for this. And by the way, I'm a huge advocate with uh, freedom of speech. You guys know that. If you guys want to come in and, and say stuff, that's one thing. But my problem is, is coming in and just outright just saying that sort of stuff. Uh, you can like, say what you want, but don't be disrespectful. Disrespectful. Like, just for no no reason. I mean, if it was a joke, it would be one thing. If we're making fun of, like, me being fat or something, that's one thing. But or SK being, like, I don't know. Like grandpa or something, you know. I don't know what. <laughs> grumpy. Far grumpy. down the hill, or being, you know, yeah, being grumpy. Yeah. Ah, oh, damn, man. Anyway, sorry. Did you bang anything kind of, though? Yeah, what yeah, kind yeah, of? Yeah. What kind of? You know, does you know? I I'm so fucking out of words on this, but that guy, you must have such a zero life to go and raise shit in somebody else's chat. I guess so. I would Just imagine. for attention, man. And like the, the 11... Can't you pay somebody to give you attention? You know, there's there's people that are on the street corners. You can pay them 50 bucks and they'll give you some attention. <laughs> you don't have to do this shit. Sometimes it's 20. Depends on who you find, you know? Yeah. Oh, really? The cheaper you, you go, this? the more it stays with you, you know? The more it lasts. <laughs> Yeah, the more you get How out of it, you know, know what I'm saying? Why am I afraid? Why do you know this? I go on the back pages. They call them, they call their money roses. Yeah, you know how I know that, <laughs> Becky? You know how I know that? You don't want to know. No, you don't Jesse, know. how do you know this? <laughs> um, I did research. 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 Hands Being on an research. Author yeah. you to research. So many... Sorry. I was just curious about things. I was like, really? I, th I thought I was gonna get arrested that night. I was like, uh, I, as <laughs> I was heading, should have been. as I head into the place, a, a cop car passed me. I was like, oh shit! But no, I was just doing this, this normal drive. Damn, damn. I remember, I Wait a minute, as you this absence is revealing way too much okay, for me. This, is, this absence. You you were actually meeting you up think? with one of these people. Uh, I have no idea what I'm talking about right now. In fact, my attorney's uh -huh. telling me to shut up. The Green Fairy is saying, say more. Talk about the time this happened. So, you know, it's all it's all something. It's all something. <laughs> Hands on research. I could have been oh doing a, I could be filming a documentary about. So, truck Jesse, stop what's your next challenge? Speaking of, you, you can't keep your mouth shut. <laughs> My next Are we challenge, gonna do the thing? My next challenge is it, gonna be my wife give me shots of whatever. Yeah. Oh. Which is gonna be horrible. Awesome. Oh, okay. Yes. Yes. Are you gonna Which is gonna be horrible. 
What's what I really hope we can arrange, and I don't know if that how possible this is, but it would be great if you had no advance warning of what was coming. That's what I told her. I told her oh, yeah. I, I need to be blindfolded or something. Like not know. You just hand it and I have to I have to shoot it. And then ask later what was it? And then that will be that will be the show. It will probably be like one shot for like <laughs> like come on, let's be real here. Like every 20 minutes, 30 minutes. I mean, how many it depends on what it is. I guess 10 minutes, 20 minutes. Depends oh. on what it is. I think that you should have to guess what it is. Yeah. Before, right? Okay. Is this fabuloso? No, I mean you can you can drink it. Hey, which, by and the way, then tell her what it is. But I think you should have to know, guess what it is. What about Drano? Can I take a shot of Drano? No. You know, has that been tried? I don't want you to die. <laughs> hey, has Becky, that? has that been? Has that ever been tried? What? Drano. Drano? Drinking Drano. <laughs> Actually, it's kind of funny you mentioned that. Oh, is it? How so? Um. Well, yeah. There was a woman in Utah. Who allegedly what? tried you to kill her That's living boyfriend with Drano. She tried to what? No, it's not. To kill her boyfriend with Drano. Why? Huh. Like she couldn't use anything else? Like just stab him? Right in the neck? Or something? Oh, I think Drano death sounds worse than stabbed in the neck. Oh. Oh, yeah. So, so what, what? Tell tell us more about this. Is there anything more? She hoped that he would go into a, a eternal sleep. <laughs> he was eternal partially asleep. Asleep. partially. She wanted she wanted to barbecue him, didn't she? And she ended up calling uh, and took. Well, you. Yeah, you're, you're kind of cutting out. out. You're kind of cutting out. You're kind of cutting out. Like, is she? Um, so she wanted to give him Drano, so he would he would die, obviously, right? But it's like, you think you're gonna get away with it? Like, what is it? Is he gonna have like a suicide note? Like, I don't understand what her <laughs> plan was. Like, like how how did she think she was gonna get away oh. with this? <sighs> they don't still. No, I can't hear you. You sound kind of uh, robotic. Are you there, Becky? Uh, see? Sorry, I sent Becky to Canada to uh, investigate the um, situation with cannibalism. And, uh -oh. uh, well, there you Speaking go. Speaking of Canada, I got three phone calls today from Manitoba. Might and be a trick. It obviously is a trick because I'm not entirely convinced they have telephone service yet. <laughs> they want you I don't to go know. Up there. You know, there was no there was no caller ID associated with it, so obviously I did not answer that number. But I don't know anybody in Manitoba, and there's only like 14 people there anyway. And Kelly at, Kelly said, Becky, I hope you brought a coat. It's still cold up there in Canada? Is it really? Is it? Like, I don't know how the weather is up there. You know, in Texas, it's it's warm pretty much all the time. Um, yeah, Canada's, I think, approaching the thaw season. <laughs> I'm At sorry. Least that, that's what they call it in Alaska. They don't call it spring. They call it oh, all right. thaw. <laughs> yeah, in Texas we don't really have a we we have a brief spring, maybe like a week, and then it's summer. It's pretty much summer. It's gonna be summer. Uh, now can you hear me? Now, yes. Yeah. Now I can hear you, Becky. You know what, Becky? Now I can hear you. <laughs> I hear you, Becky. Did you miss me? Oh, I missed you so much. <laughs> you know we did. All right, <laughs> Becky. Now you tell me, you tell me about this Drano some more. So I can learn how to take out some, you know, uh, yeah, so I can learn some stuff. No, I'm not teaching you how to take out anybody, but listen. Oh, don't Mars girl me. I want to know. I want to know. How do I do this? Don't make me call your mama. 
Uh, <laughs> um, this woman called, um, she gave her, her boyfriend a spoonful of drain cleaner of Drano. A spoonful? And then ended up calling him a cab. Like a spoonful of sugar? And taking him to urgent care. Oh, oh, oh well, what? She, he was half okay, asleep. Okay, first of all. First of and all, she how poured Drano fuck? in his mouth. Oh, while he was asleep. Yeah, and she poured Drano in his mouth. And then he was in, he woke up, he was in really, really bad pain. And so she really? called a cab and took him to urgent care. Did she not oh. make the cab? He did serve. <laughs> well, you know. So, she took him to urgent care. Though. I, I you know, think we nice. weren't the brightest crown in the box. The- She's still Oh, you said crown again. Oh, thank you. That's one of the words on the list. (laughs) Uh, John doesn't know about the list. No, he doesn't. Um, (laughs) So, he, um, I guess she wanted him to, she wanted him to die. The spoonful of Drano, but what, regret it later or something? She wanted him, well, I guess because he was in pain, she Uh. felt bad. It doesn't really say, but she said he he would go into eternal sleep. Well, eventually, after his yeah. guts are liquefied. Yeah. Well, I, I it doesn't sound like she realized that that would be a problem. Yeah, she, she's Jesus. You know what? Let the, she, she, yeah. Is she a crackhead? She might be. Well, what, what does she look like? It, what's her name? Let's let's find her on the internet. What was her name? What's her name? L e e l l e e l l e Wiseman W e i s s m a n. Now there's an Obviously. ironic last name. <laughs> no doubt, that's exactly what I was thinking there. Ellie Wiseman. I've got an instinct that this is going to be a really sad, depressing story that's going to make everyone feel bad. The more you dig into it. Well, we we well, don't want to know actually, that much about it. We do only you want not to know have a picture of her? Of I don't see a picture of her. Do you not have a picture? Oh. Oh, hold on. Oh. Let me send you one. Wait a second. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Okay, you did send me that picture. And I didn't think that was a woman. Not to be offensive. Oh. But. (laughs) See, this is making me sad. Um, I thought maybe that was like like a trans woman. And... You know, I didn't oh, want no. to misgender no, say no. woman when it's a trans woman. You know what I'm saying? Um, let me let me let me just do the Windows capture real fast so people can see this. Come on, be honest with yourself. Just be honest. I'm not gonna blame you. I'm not gonna shame you. Just be honest. If you saw this person, what what what, what is what is the first thing? What, what do you what do you think of? Like. In, in your brain, like, how do you process Steven the Tyler. <laughs> Yeah. It looks like Slash. Oh, yeah. I like a Weird Al. Oh, yeah. kind of, not really. Um, I still say Slash. Yeah. Put a top hat on it. Yeah. So, a dude. She's got fucking whiskers. <laughs> yes. I mean, Seriously. I can't see anyone, but I I know in my heart that she's a beautiful human being. <laughs> you are you are and correct. Who, oh yes, she uh, she is the most anybody. beautiful. She is the most beautiful human being. The most beautiful Drano poisoner, she, crackhead you can imagine. I'm sure she was having a rough night. Yes, uh, she has. By the way, she looks like she has scars on her face that would be uh, indicative of a uh, no picking picking at your skin, which usually yeah. happens when you're on meth. You know. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, but she's pretty. She is a party person, you know? Just pretty. Just so pretty. Mm-hmm. Uh, man, oh, man. That story. That story. Okay. Wow. So when you hear about stuff like this, Mr. McNee, th- does it give you inspiration for, uh, for other material? Usually. Frequently. There's, um, There's another room in the Nightmare Mansion. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually I'm looking at a book um, on my desk at the moment. It's called um, Encyclopedia of Modern Murder, 1962 to 1982, which is, is a great book. And it's just 
lot. It's, it's, an, it's an encyclopedia of murder. It's exactly what it says. And it just sort of lists all these incredible ways that people murdered folk across different decades. And, you know, I'll just, if I'm, if I'm bored, if I'm, you know, on the, on the toilet or something, you know, I can just pick this book up and, and pick any page and find something just sort of really incredible. I'll tell you one that sticks in my mind because I always wanted to turn it into a short story. I probably shouldn't say this because I'll, someone else will take the idea and run with it, but I just haven't come up with an idea for how to use it. Mm. But uh, there was an entry on uh, acid murders, um, and I have looked this up on, on the internet. This is, a, like I say, a, an old book it's from the 1980s, and it's very well researched. And I, I've, I've searched for the murder that's mentioned, and I've never been able to find anything about it. But apparently, at some point in the distant past, Someone murdered someone else through the use of a hydrofluoric acid enema. Oh! Oh my God! Why? Oh! That, that is not nice. No. And so I always wanted to write a short story called the hydrofluoric acid enema, but I haven't come up with an idea of how to build the story around that without without it just being a description of someone dying from a hydrofluoric acid enema. I think like, you'd want to have some like cost to it. Like, oh, why? <laughs> Maybe he goes to have a colonic, and and and, and somebody, and it's his ex woman, and she decides to switch the formula. God, yeah, uh, yeah. Harold, what if it's a Harold Shipman type of a uh, case where it's a doctor or oh, a nurse? That's grim. <laughs> if it's an old patient, uh, yeah, that's that's really grim. Um. Ooh, I like that idea. Yeah, but that's you the, need to write this. That's the kind of thing that sticks with me when I hear about these kind of stories. And I think Drano. I don't think Drano would necessarily be as bad, but it would be pretty bad. I think it would be pretty close. Yeah, I uh, think they work under similar uh, chemical <laughs> principles. Yeah. Yeah. Could be, yeah. Oh, like what if it was like a, I don't know, like like a maid or something. Um, like a housemaid, you know, who died, or I guess in some horrible way, and, and, and she, this nightmare, she she tortures people with like, I guess cleaning products, house cleaning products. <laughs> so she, she uses a like I mentioned Fabuloso before. You don't know what that is. It's uh, it's what we use here. It's fabric it's, softener. Uh, no, well, it's no, more than that. No, it's it's it's. it's, it's actually, oh well, it can be floor cleaner or. Yeah, it's a general purpose cleaner, like Simple Green, but yeah, purple it smells, bottle. The, right? the, the thing about Fabuloso is the packaging looks like Kool Aid. Like if you were to see that and you were a kid, you'd be like, "Oh, this looks like juice," and you'd probably drink it because you probably didn't know any better. <laughs> no, I, I kid you not. Yeah, and, like it's all purple and red it's and purple. green, and it all looks like uh, Kool Aid mm -hmm. colors. Uh -huh. It's like bright colors. Yeah, and I saw my kids looking at that. I'm like, no, no, don't reach for that. No, and I was thinking. Why the fuck did they even make it that bright color in the first place? Like marketing, just so people like, oh, I want to buy this. I mean, I don't, I don't get. Wow. It. Mm. Anyway. Hey, hey, Jesse, did you notice that on John's Amazon page there is an anthology that we were talking about just this week? Yes, I did, and I was thinking, Becky's real smart. She's probably planning on bringing a bunch of other guests that are related to this anthology. I don't know if that's true, but she's pretty smart. Um, Maybe. The, uh, what is it? She, she is? Tall Tales with tall Short tales. Cocks. Mm, yes. Mm -hmm. What can you tell me about Tall Tales with Short Cocks? Uh, it is a bizarro anthology series. Um, uh, originally put up, uh, you know, it was put up by uh, Rooster Public under its previous uh Owners, so there's five volumes. I've got. I have stories in four of them. Um, I. They were looking for. It was an open submission call. They were looking for uh, stories for a bizarro anthology. It was going to be their their first anthology publication. Um, and at the time, they didn't have a name for it. It wasn't like they put out a submission call saying short cock. <laughs> Come, you know, call us on that. Uh, you know, there was nothing about that. I didn't know what the book was going to be called until we started selling it. And apparently, it did sell very well uh, to men who were interested in 
uh, <laughs> books about shot cocks who were, and they got a lot of returns from men who, you know, bought the book and discovered it wasn't actually about that at all. It was a bunch we of We just talked about this. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> so, so my uh, short story that I submitted was my first attempt at a bizarro story, and it was called uh, In the Flesh, and it was set in a, in a, 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 fantas- a fantastical city called Grudgehaven, where everyone was a walking abomination made of sludge and slime and biomechanical bits and pieces, and there was one human woman in the city that everyone wanted to obtain, all these clockwork and... Uh, and disease-ridden gangsters wanted to find this woman, and there was a granite private detective trying to track her down at a motel made entirely of flesh. Um, a motel so made out of flesh, like like the yeah. There's a lot of yeah. There's a lot of hotels in my stories. <laughs> I was noticing you have an yeah. ongoing theme here. Yeah. <laughs> So in this story, there's an entire motel made of human flesh. That's so like, was the foundation made out of like like stone too, or was it okay? Was it just like the wallpaper oh. was flesh? Oh, every, everything in there is flesh. The, the bed is is oh. flesh, and it's oh. and it sprouts hair and sweats when oh. you get up to Shit. stuff in there. So it's living. Um, it's living tissue. Yeah, it's a oh. li- yeah, it's a living organism, but it's also a Whoa. motel. Um, Don't take this the wrong way, John, <laughs> but if you have an Airbnb listing, I am not going to sign up for that. <laughs> you, you imagine how bad that room would smell? It, like, all the sweat yeah. and BO and farts and gut <laughs> shit. You, like, whole about, new whoa! meaning to cleaning the room. Yeah. Talk about a living, breathing, organic towels. room. Like, it'd be like yeah. living inside someone's, like, like armpit. Colon? Armpit, yeah, basically, yeah. Mm. Or, yeah, just some little fold. Some fold. <laughs> so, yeah. In a fat fold. Living inside yeah, a fat fold. Stuff. There you go. Yeah. More fat jokes. Uh, Thank you, uh, Mr. <laughs> Deadman. I'm going to, you know, to myself, because I don't want to blame anybody else for these jokes. you got to be careful. you got to be careful, Mr. McNee, because uh, we get screened by haters who might try to report us for fat jokes. Um. Oh shit! It happens. Mm. But that story was uh, that was my story anyway that I submitted and, well, uh, and bought it. And then they were doing Tall Tales with Short Cops Volume Two after the tremendous success of the first volume to a bunch of guys who didn't want to read it. Um, and the publisher said, "Can I get another story in that same universe?" So I said, "Okay," and I wrote another uh, short story. Uh, set in the city of Grudgehaven, about called a hand walks into a bar, which is about a severed hand that wanders into a bar <laughs> and finds that sounds like the beginning of a joke. <laughs> yeah, and finds this random guy, and it turns out this hand belongs to a uh, an a, a, a gangster or industrialist who is the victim of a kidnapping, and they cut off his hand to send with a ransom note. But the hand escaped and has gone to find help. Um, so. Oh my so he I went sold to, that one as well. He went to go and then find the help. Publisher said, yeah. Would, and then okay. the publisher said to me... Uh, the kidnapped victim's escaping bit by bit. Yeah. <laughs> and the publisher said to me, uh, you've written two short stories set in Grudgehaven now. If you're 20% of the way towards a book, can you write me a, a few, another six, seven short stories and I'll, and I'll publish it? And I said, okay, and I, and I did, and I wrote another bunch of stories set in the same universe, and that became Grudge Punk, which is my first book. Um, and that's a series of interconnected bizarro stories, as I say, set in this uh, hell city. Um, hell city? Entire, yeah. yeah, it's sort of a, it's a, entire, it's a gruesome oh, uh, oh, place. Hell. It's all sort of... Gotcha. Yeah. So it sort of exists in a, in a different dimension, obviously, where nothing... Everything's... Sort of twisted through a, a diseased prison. And you know, even when I was the a kid, are named after. Yeah. When I was a kid, I played a lot of. I don't know if you ever played the game Doom, but I played a lot of that when I was a kid. Yeah. And this is sounding like a whole episode of Doom. We're just like it's just <laughs> hell, and it's just fire, and living tissue, and you're just fighting shit. Oh man, that's how it's I like, play. It's like Doom. Noir, 
You know, yes. if it was if it's it Doom without the fighting, if if it oh. was just Doom where all the characters are talking to each other and and huh. uh, having intense conversations and, and going on little mysteries and huh, trying to solve crimes. And, yeah. So Doom before like the Doom guy gets there and wrecks everything up. Uh, I guess the yeah, zombies which is, and the imps are like talking. <laughs> which is what I'm, which is what I'm interested in. Really, that's yeah. you know I, I I like I'm curious about what the monsters are getting up to when they're not tearing people apart. Yeah, that, that's interesting. Because you know, to this point, to this day, to this moment, I've never thought about that. And now thinking about that, I'm like, you know what? There's something to that because what are they doing? What what are the zombies doing when they're hiding behind the wall, waiting for the doom guy to appear? Be like, uh, let's talk. What are you doing? Yeah, <laughs> you know. Anyway, they've got to have something going on. I mean, I don't yeah. like to write stories. A lot of horror stories, typical horror stories, are about a typical average guy or woman. Uh, going about their normal everyday life to which we can all relate in the suburbs somewhere and they encounter something strange or terrifying and I don't like to write those stories I like to write stories about strange and terrifying people who are already involved in horrifying situations I like to get to the Mm -hmm. get to the good stuff and see what those characters are up to that's what interests me that's cool that's cool um, let's see. Oh, uh, yeah. What is your favorite horror movie? The, the thing, easily. Oh, I was gonna say Nightmare on Elm Street with all all the dream stuff, but I was. I, yeah, I, th- I think. No, well, Night Night Nightmare on Elm Street is cool. I don't like. That's like the only slasher film that I really like because of its inventiveness and the inventive and the the the, the nature of mm-hmm. Freddy. Is amazing. It's a fantastic core concept. Prince of Nightmares. If you, if someone wanted to buy that concept, could easily be a Freddy Krueger reboot. <laughs> someone, you know, Freddy's Hotel, Hotel yeah. Freddy, you know, something like that. It could. Maybe, maybe that's the way to bring it back. But you know what? They're already trying to bring it back. Honestly, it saves that? you all that chasing people. Yeah. They have a hotel. Have you all seen I? that? Have you seen that trailer? Or uh, as like a oh, teaser? Oh yeah. They're, they're bringing. They're trying to bring uh, Nightmare on Elm Street back. Mm-hmm. For real, um, it looked of interesting. They are. It looked interesting, but it's like, come on, man, you might need to get with some fresh blood. Like maybe Mister McNee over here, who's like, why don't like the street? I understand, but why don't you just have it to where now he's running a hotel of nightmares or something? I don't know, <laughs> man. Uh yeah. you could. I don't know. We have to do the caption contest. We do. We got we got some stuff we need to do before we wrap the show up. All right. The caption. We have caption, caption contest, and we have questions. We can't forget this stuff. It's about... well, we 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 have the cap. We have to do the caption first. Okay, first. All right, I'm gonna pull it up real fast. Uh, let's see this one. And it is the is it the the box. The box. Okay. <laughs> I absolutely love this. This is All made right. me laugh. I don't so know. Did you share hard. it to Mr. McNee before? No, I did not. I forgot. Okay. That's okay. You might could do a screen share. I'm not good at caption like compositions you. anyway. I could do a no, screen share. No, but you sure would think the picture is funny. It is pretty funny. This is this is our fearless leader, by the way. Uh, <laughs> I don't know about fearless anymore. Uh, yeah, so on the screen, you should probably see. You them. put this picture up. That's that's pretty ballsy. Yeah, that was for my kids. <laughs> I, uh, okay, so I, I shared the screen, so you should be able to see it. You'll see the uh, yeah. OBS, all this stuff on my desktop. It's probably like a cluster. Oh. Okay, I'm going to read the captions, and then y'all can vote and see who went, who wins. All right. Okay. I cannot read the first one right. Jesus Christ, Avengers Assemble. <laughs> you know it. Corporal America. <laughs> I like that one. Captain Squarebox. Yeah. Lieutenant Liv. 
General Love Train McStuffin. <laughs> okay, wait, wait a second. Is that is that is that uh, is that who I think it is? No. Okay, good. It is not. Because that, that's a potential <laughs> they told winner. They me I needed the helmet. They told me I needed the helmet because I'm special. <laughs> Aviators assemble. <laughs> You must bring me a shrubbery. Uh, well. Yeah. So, um. Uh, the, uh, the one I laughed the most about, um, the, dang it, I can't recall it right now. I would say. General Love Train. Yeah, seven. General Love Train. <laughs> General Love Train. That one right there. Okay. Okay, that's Jay Britton. All okay. right, yeah. free and book. Then we had one more caption contest. All right, which one is this one? That was the one of um, the liquor store. The with liquor the shopping cart. Oh, let me pull that up <laughs> real fast. I know which one you're talking about. Hold on, let me let me let me acquire that photo uh, real fast. The liquor store. Oh my god. Oh, sorry. I pulled up something else. Was, which was like a, <laughs> a little person playing something. Jesus. Oh uh, my lord. I need a f Sorry, I wasn't prepared for this one. Um, That's my fault. It's okay. <laughs> oh, you sent it to the front oh, one. That's right. Boy. I'll send Oh, this one? It's worth the wait. It's worth the wait, guys. Trust me. Yeah. And what's oh, it yeah. It is. I just push the button and then push another button and it'll be on the screen. So... No. And it's worth the wait. Worth the wait. Boom. I'm surprised. I didn't get any. Uh, okay, there, there we go. Let me. Um, I can only imagine what the what the comments are for this. And let me clear off the screen. All this other crap that's on the screen. What is all this crap? Are you ready for me to read them? Mm hmm. A girl's got to eat. That's true. Dead man does Dallas. Well, <laughs> of course. Pretty woman too. It's all downhill from here. <laughs> well, he married the prostitute. Not enough right? liquor. Not enough liquor. Five bucks for the free hand. Fifteen for the entire basket. <laughs> <laughs> People of Walmart. I kissed a girl and I liked it. Wait a minute. WTF. <laughs> Generally a dollar. <laughs> Generally a dollar. <laughs> yeah. You got to shake what your mama gave you. You do. That's how you for make Christmas. the money. <laughs> want, a, want a date? Looking for some action? Need some company? Got money? <laughs> When you're hooking at 3 a.m., but you have the munchies for mac and cheese and lateral scratchers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so which one wins that one? Oh, man. What do you guys think? Uh, I can't vote because I know. Okay, the general dollar was pretty funny. I know which one. I was, was kind of going okay. for that one. That's Bo. Bo okay, yeah. Bo. Send him some. Send him some. Bo's good okay. people. He's good. He's good people. He yeah. All right. What about the questions? We have some crazy questions in the in the group. What we had the, one question. One question. Um, if you had to eat human flesh. That's right. Um, That's what right. What would it? What would it be? Our cannibal question. Um. Huh. Wait. 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 Yeah. Wait. Let's when ask our guest. Let's ask our guest. Mr. McNee. Are okay. you still there? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Don't incriminate yourself. First you off, not, no. I'm not your attorney, but gonna advise you that. Um, if you were, what was the question, <laughs> Becky? If you had, if you to had eat. to eat human flesh, what what part of the body would you eat? What part of the body? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Presumably not your own. Yeah. Not your own. No. Um, well. I, I, did you ever see that movie Alive? Yes. Yes. 
Yeah, with the the plane crash and rugby team, and I I remember that in that movie they went uh, straight for the rump. You go for the um, butt. You go yeah, for the butt. Yep. I think that's I think that's sound sound logic. That's sound raising. Yeah. 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 Yeah, there's got to be some good some good meat there, right? Oh yeah, there's good but, some good but, meat right but there. But and thigh, but yeah. thigh, good Am- meat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> um. Okay, so the comments are when you say eat, you mean detach, chew, and swallow, right? And I said, yep. <laughs> yeah. Um, see, that's what I'm curious too, because I know what part of the body <laughs> I'm thinking of, but uh, that's a different thing. I oh. Mean, um. No. If yeah, and you can- think of a different kind of dipping sauce. If that makes me a cannibal, mm-hmm. then I guess then I'm a cannibal, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> um, had to. You're funny. More like when I, more like when and there's nothing like a good butt roast, though. The ribs mm-hmm. are very good, too. Um, ribs are good. Christina said, we, we ask a similar question to this every week on our show. Ah. Yeah, they do, but... We're not trying to um, steal your stuff. We're not stealing your stuff. <laughs> no. Oh. If somebody said brains. Um, somebody said cheek. Mm. I'll a have human a barbacoa. B-L- yeah. BLN sandwich. You know, bacon, lettuce, and nipples. <laughs> 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 well, let That's me ask. Fat. That's all fat and skin. Yeah. yeah. Let me ask That's this not... question though. I mean, imagine the three of you were stuck on a desert island, and somebody oh, had God. to go to sustain the others. They would eat me first. Who's it going to be? Yeah. They would eat me first. No, they wouldn't. Hmm? No, no they, they wouldn't. They'd eat me first because it would last the longest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, they wouldn't. Don't let them lie. Probably like, oh man, you're just going to kill the girl. No, no, we need the girl. Because what what if what if we're the only ones left to right? <laughs> procreate? You know, I'm sorry, oh, Becky. God. Hey, wait a minute. What if? What if? Um, you know, all sorts of things. Then, you gotta think. You gotta think survival. And so, got, if that's the case, then I get to decide who goes. Sure. Nah, yeah. <laughs> sure. I could, lose, I could lose a butt cheek. <laughs> She's probably going to go with whoever can make a fire. <laughs> All right. The first person to make a fire is okay. Um, how to make yeah. a fire. Do, oh, I, do I have a lighter on me? Um, <laughs> do you have lighter fluid? <laughs> I, hit, I hit rocks? <laughs> I don't know. Um, somebody said fingernails. <laughs> oh, what? Another yeah. person's fingernails. Oh, no. that's, that's disgusting. That's one of the grossest ideas I've ever heard. Oh, that's, yeah, that's yeah. Bad. I, I'd rather somebody, eat nasty. I'd rather eat snails than fingernails. What? Yeah. Ugh. Ugh. Something from the thigh butt region, a good ribeye, maybe some back strap. Uh, that, was Chris, that was Chris Miller. He's talking that's with some somebody. Experience. It sounds like he's thought about this a yeah. lot. Mm-hmm. Chris Miller probably and has. Then <laughs> and then there's... Then there's Mike Ianbach. Oh Jesus! Oh this, God! This, this thing is uh, okay. Okay. Hold on. <laughs> Who said? I bit part of a guy's nose off once. It didn't taste like much, but copper. I'd do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Did he just bite his nose ring off? I mean, where, where's the copper come from? <laughs> Blood. Blood. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um. Yeah. Amazing <laughs> stuff. Yeah, <laughs> it's quite the, the 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 quality of the followers <laughs> are is unmatched. <laughs> it's great. I love it. I love it. They're that's so what, awesome. That's why we do this. That's why we include this in the show because we want you guys to know that we include you guys. You guys are part of it, and ladies, you guys are part of it. Um, you might have seen the post I had put on the on deadmanstome.net. Uh, maybe I was a little bit preachy about it, but I was like, you know, like we on the show, we value the listeners. We do, you know, we we work very hard getting great guests. Like we have Mr. McNee here, great guests, um, and we talk about what he does, his work. Oh, it's good stuff, and we get 
And we try to entertain you guys. We try to work, work very hard on doing that. And we hope that you are, right? Would you all agree? Right. Whatever. I agree. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Um, what we have said. an awesome guest and we have awesome listeners. Mm-hmm. Yes, we do. No, we I'm, couldn't do it without them. Now, I'll be honest with you guys, of course. It would be great if we could reach a, uh, if we can get it to where the show can actually start taking care of its own, whether it be through, you know, advertisers, which I know that gets annoying and ad at the beginning. It's like, oh my God, you know, or through like support from the fans. That'd be great too. Um, because it is kind of, it is kind of draining doing a show like every other day, but, but we do it for the love too, you know, it's. You know. Yeah. That's what we do. You think we ha- you think we don't have better things to do on a Friday night? <laughs> You're absolutely right. We do not. <laughs> that's that's definitely true. <laughs> My wife is like, yeah, I know what you're doing tonight. What do you think I'm doing tonight? The same thing you do every night. You're gonna be you're doing your podcast. Of course, of course. Gotta do that. Gotta do that. Gotta make it happen. Gotta make it happen, you know? Um but yeah. uh I, I see a big future for the show. Got to continue to work on it. Got to continue to make it happen. Uh, bring Get more people involved. But people, I mean fans. I mean you guys. And I don't even like the word fans. I mean just like listeners. People who are active in it. Like Family. The, family. Supporters. Yeah, supporters. Just, just like crowd. Just people at a bar. You know? Like you guys are part of it. And. Yeah. I mean maybe there's a future. A point in time in the future where. I mean. I don't know. Maybe we can uh, help carry the show, make it achieve better things. I don't know. It's up to you guys. Up to us. See, see, see where we go with it. Uh, yeah. I think... Uh, now, do you guys have any other questions for John McNee? He's been a great guest. I think... Uh, He's been Man, very yeah. patient with us. <laughs> <laughs> now... Normally, Mr. McNee, normally we talk about like a lot of different books that, that an author co- and, you know has worked on. Uh, for mm-hmm. you, because, I mean, just the way The Prince of Nightmares is, the premise alone was like, we could just mine that for material, you know? Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. Hollywood, take fantastic. a look. You could mine this for material. I mean, if we could do it unscripted, not even planned, what, what can you guys do if you actually plan on doing it? You know? Man. Yeah. I would love it if people check it out. It's a great book. Yes, and there's a link to his author page in the um, show notes, mm. by the way. Great. So check out... Buy his always. fucking books, you losers. <laughs> <laughs> Buy Prince of Nightmares. And review them, please. Check out the other books. And, Mr. McNeil, you are free to come back anytime to talk about any other book you want or anything else at all, because... From I don't know how you judge our conversation here, but I'm pretty much open to talk about anything, even if it is a little <laughs> bit difficult to, to navigate. That's okay. Yeah. I try not to get political, well, but we we do you know it happens. We we talk about yeah. life, you know. While I'm here, can I talk about uh, a couple of recent publications? Sure, sure, absolutely, absolutely. Well, the, the, the two I want to bring to people's attention, this one just came out, uh, Welcome to a Town Called Hell, from um, the Bardizo Books, uh, which is a new horror anthology. It's all set in the town of Hell, Colorado, which is Ooh. sinking into a hellish abyss. The, the forces of darkness <coughs> are rising up to claim the town, and every short story by different uh, writers takes place over uh, the course of this town's descent. And my story, a uh, friend from a low place, is towards the back of the book, right when things are hitting their peak. Um, so that's really cool. Uh, I'd like, you know, everyone should check that out. The other one, which is just coming, which I think has just come out, or is about to come out this month, is In Darkness Delight, Masters of Midnight, um, which is a new horror anthology from Corpus Press uh, with me, Josh Mallow, and Willie Meekle, and Jason Parent, and various other people. Um, and my story in that is called, I'm not going to tell you what it's about, but it, the title is The Dog Shit Gauntlet. So. 
the Read dog himself. shit gauntlet. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I am curious. You know I'm curious. <laughs> we know. You're always curious. Oh my I mean, God. a title like That's that, hilarious. I'm just like, tell me more. <laughs> and I have a way of, uh, you know, I have a way of, of getting that, you know. Come on, tell me more, tell me more, uh-huh. tell me more. <laughs> you know? But um, definitely. Is is King Arthur involved in this story at all? Uh, that would be giving too much of Okay. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, this absinthe. Was an okay choice. Yeah. Was an okay choice. Um, it was all right. I'm feeling, I'm feeling pretty good right now. I'm feeling good. I don't I'm think loose. you're supposed to drink it by pint. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, I just drink this whole thing. I don't. That's probably not <laughs> enough. Uh, that's not a pint. Uh, I probably need to drink more. I guess I don't know. I put put a lot in oh, there. Oh dear lord! I'm seeing fairies around me. <laughs> I mean, does that help? Those are the mid. Those are no, the that's mid- just SK. Ah, oh, dang it! How did you know that SK was over here, <laughs> prancing over there in the corner, wearing a skirt? How do you know that? It's a kill. It's not a skirt. It's a tutu. It's a kill. It's a kill. No, it's Kilt, not. It's a tutu. Skirt. What does it matter? What does it matter? Come on. Well, it it definitely makes a difference in in. You're saying you're calling a kilt a skirt with a Scotsman on the phone. That's mm. real bright there, Jesse. Listen, <laughs> listen, nobody has a flower print. <coughs> <laughs> yeah, no. I like in the chat. Uh, no. Count, count Cucula. <laughs> Absent tastes like NyQuil. It does, actually. <laughs> um, this tastes like uh, like black licorice. It does. Mm-hmm. Which, yeah. by the way, last reminder, I don't normally let my wife run the show, but she came up with a pretty good show idea. Where she dictates what shot I take. I will take whatever and shot not, of and not necessarily alcohol. Not alcohol. It could be it could be alcohol. It could be beer. It could be NyQuil. It could be hot sauce. It could be whatever. My wife. That's right, my wife. Um So if I don't know, if y'all want it to happen, let me know. Um I guess let me know in the comment section or in the, or the chat if y'all want that to happen. We can make it happen. That'd be great. That could be great. The the subtitle of the show would be Jesse's wife gets even. Yes. Shit, what the fuck was that? My dog's acting crazy. Okay, ladies. It's barking at SK again, isn't he? Probably. Man, <laughs> ladies, gentlemen, thank you so much for watching the show. Your support means a whole lot to us. It really does. Uh, you see, uh, you see where it goes. I mean, recognize we recognize and pay it back. Um, Mr. McNee, thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you. It's uh, it's uh, just getting towards daylight here in Scotland. Um, so I'll, pro- you know, I'll probably just feel free get to some. send us any pictures that you want to send of Scotland. Oh sure, <laughs> especially if so. Scottish. You're saying it's turning a lighter shade of gray. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. Okay, heading on. We're getting very close to six a.m., so I'm probably just gonna get another cup of coffee, maybe some uh, matzo ball soup. Uh, you know, I like the San Antonio Spurs. If you're uh, betting in the NBA's this year, then they're gonna win it all. And I guess there's uh, nothing else left to say except so long. Mm. All right, Mr. McNeese, you take it easy. Take it easy. Night. Thank you so much. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all.